So I got a small crack on my windshield and thought I'd try to repair it using one of the readily available kits out there. In this picture, I was in the middle of repairing the crack using the typical syringe style repair kit, oh about a month ago. Because I had not done it properly, the resin repair actually popped out. So in this video I will redo that repair, but this time I will use a bridge style repair kit. This kit differs from the syringe style ones as it allows for multiple repairs in one kit. It is also styled after professional repair tools, or at least it resembles one to some degree. Note that it does not function exactly the same as a professional tool, but I've got to say that after doing this repair, I do prefer this style over the syringe style. A quick disclaimer, I'm not using standard procedure for my repairs as I don't have all the necessary tools. So I suppose this video can be used more of an educational one where you can see what if a repair was done differently and if there are any lessons to be learned from it. A professional repair would involve using the right drill bit, only drilling small holes, using a depth gauge to ensure the drilling doesn't go too far, and also using a spring hammer to create a mini bull's eye chip at the ends of the crack after drilling out the ends. As usual, if you find my videos useful, please subscribe and share. Also, find more details in the video description. A little background before we start. The crack I have on the windshield is small, but I wanted to use a method where the ends of the cracks are drilled out and filled with resin so that it helps to prevent a small crack from spreading. So you typically use this method to stop a larger crack from spreading. I wanted to try this out on a smaller one so that if I needed to do this in the future, I will have some experience. When you have a large enough crack, you cannot just fill in the crack and chip. Filling in the crack does not actually strengthen the glass or repair it to the original strength or prevent a crack from spreading. You have to drill out the ends in order to stop it. Take this piece of paper with a tear in it as an example. Once a tear is started, it is easier for it to continue tearing at the ends. If you punch out the ends of the tear properly, the tear stops there. A new tear would have to form at the repair points in order for it to continue to spread easily. Note that a crack or chip that is on the edge of the windshield should not be repaired as the structure is already compromised and therefore it is a safety concern. Second, if the crack is in the line of sight of the driver, such that it could cause visibility issues, then replacement is also advised. Lastly, if the crack is 6 inches or longer, it is probably best to get it done professionally. That is why you might want to use this technique, so that you can catch a crack when it's still small and easy to repair on your own before it spreads. Here is a look at the crack after I tried to drill out the ends. In this case, the drilling didn't go well since my old rotary tool was failing and it would turn off and on randomly dropping RPMs and causing the drill tip to skip across the windshield. This caused the upside down V-shaped scuff mark in the middle between the drill holes. I did not end up using a proper drill bit as my Dremel tools call it is not the right size for it, as you can see here. So I ended up using a diamond tip drill bit. One thing I learned is that if you're drilling out a hole, don't use a large pointed tip. This leaves a hole that is V-shaped and easy for the resin repair to loosen and pop out, which is what happened to me. Make sure to wear safety glasses and gloves. Also, a mask can help to prevent breathing in small glass particles when drilling. So now I am redoing this repair with a square tipped drill bit making sure to drill a hole that is at 90 degrees to the glass. Note too that you don't want to drill too deep and hit the plastic laminate layer that is in between the glass layers. This can cause a flowering effect on the repair when the resin is applied, so it won't be pretty. For my situation, I have to drill out the hole bigger so that I can square the hole, but normally you would not make hole this large in diameter. Note that I am only using very light pressure here.
Next, install the bridge or base directly over the repair area. Now, screw the resin chamber clockwise into the bridge. Make sure to continue until the rubber mouth touches the windshield firmly and forms a good seal. Squeeze three to six drops of the resin into the chamber. The size of the damage would dictate how much is needed. If resin leaks out at this point, then the chamber is not tight enough on the windshield, so turn to further tighten the seal and stop the leak. Screw the pressure driver clockwise into the chamber. Tighten until the pressure driver is almost all the way in. Check from inside the car that the damage is being filled with resin. If needed, tighten the driver further to push more resin in. After that, wait for about 46 minutes for the resin to fill the damaged area. Unscrew the pressure driver to let any trapped air out. Then reinstall the driver, tighten, and make sure no air bubbles are in the damaged area. If there are, then steps 4 to 6 may need to be repeated. Turn the resin chamber about half a turn counterclockwise and remove the entire apparatus. Watch for dripping resin and wipe away excess from the windshield. Any resin left on the windshield will harden and will have to be scraped off at the end of the curing process. Roll a drop or two of resin slightly above the hole and quickly and gently apply a curing strip. If you see any air bubbles in the repair area where the holes are, then you should reapply the strip. If you don't do this quickly, you can get air bubbles. For a proper repair, you don't want any air bubbles. If you have a larger hole to fill, like in my case, you will see that the resin will leak out of the hole making it easy to get air bubbles. Do this quickly and retry it if you don't get it right the first time. Some resins are thinner than others. The thicker ones are normally used to pit fill as they won't run as easily as you see here. Best to do this kind of repair when it is sunny and warm out. Otherwise you will need a UV light. Next, move the car into direct sunlight and or use a UV light. Let the resin cure. The instructions say that it should take only about 5 to 10 minutes, but it usually takes longer. It could take up to an hour depending on the amount of sunlight available. When the curing is complete, the strip will stick to the windshield. Push the strip from one corner to lift and remove it. Use this applied razor blade to scrape the surface lightly at 90 degrees to the windshield. Scrape away excess dried resin, being careful not to damage the repair. Make sure to scrape at 90 degrees or else you can end up lifting the resin in the repair area. If you have a lot of excess resin to scrape that is away from the repair, then it is okay to scrape at less than 90 degrees to help remove it easier. Wipe away the white flakes of resin with water. Then use some polish or swirl remover to polish. And finish off with some glass cleaner. All done! Not too bad for a second attempt. Hope this was useful for you. Check out my channel for other unique videos. Thanks for watching.